This is a coronal section of the abdomen. You can see the domes of the diaphragm. This is the right dome of the diaphragm and this is the left dome of the diaphragm. Underneath the left dome of the diaphragm is part of the stomach, that is the fundus of the stomach. Also on the left side, left hypochondrium, you can notice the spleen. Note that the spleen has a visceral surface that is related to the stomach and it is also related to the kidney, to the left kidney. This is the left kidney. On the superior pole of the left kidney, this is a piece of the left suprarenal gland. The left suprarenal gland forms part of the bed of the stomach. Underneath the right dome of the diaphragm is the liver. Note the wedge shape of the liver. Also note the branching pattern inside the liver of the portal triad structures, the hepatic artery, portal vein, and the bile duct or biliary passages. The visceral surface of the liver, as shown here, is related to the kidney, to the right kidney. In between the right kidney and the liver is the hepatorenal pouch of peritoneum. The upper pole of the right kidney is related to the suprarenal gland and the suprarenal gland itself is related to the liver, to the bare area of the liver. The visceral surface of the liver is also related to the colon. You can see here, this is part of the ascending colon and if at this point it will form the right colic flexure or the hepatic flexure. Note the hostrations and the folding of the ascending colon. This tube here does not belong to large intestine, it belongs to the small intestine and most likely it's a piece of jejunum. You can see the mucosal folds within it, the plechi circularis. In the midline is the vertebral column with the lumbar vertebrae and the intervertebral discs in between them. On the lateral side of the vertebral column, the muscle here is the psoas major muscle. On the lateral abdominal wall, you can see the three layers of muscles that form the anterolateral abdominal wall. That is the transverse abdominus muscle, the internal oblique, and the external oblique muscle. This is the region of the iliac crest and this is part of the greater pelvis. This is the iliac fossa where the iliacus muscle is arising. Below the level of the pelvic brim is the lesser pelvis or the pelvis minor or the true pelvis. These are loops of the small intestine within the pelvis, mainly of the ileum. Also you can see here a loop of large intestine and that is the sigmoid colon. Further below, this part is the rectum and to be specific this is the ampulla of the rectum, the dilated lower part of the rectum. It leads into the anal canal and that is the point of the anorectal junction where you can see some of the folds that characterize the upper part of the anal canal. These are the anal columns. On the lateral wall of the pelvis, this muscle here is the obturator internus muscle that forms the lateral wall of the pelvis.
medial to the obturator internus, we can see the very thin layer of muscle on both sides that is formed by levator ani. This is the pelvic diaphragm, which is mainly formed by levator ani. Further below in the perineum, on either side of the anal canal, you can see this fossa that is mainly filled with fat. This is the ischioanal fossa. It is located between the anal canal and the ischium. The roof is made by the levator ani muscle. 